everyone. Um, my name is Inbal. I'm a senior data scientist at uh, Gong, and uh, I'll be talking about text classification uh, using um, all of the deep learning frameworks that are available um, right now. Uh, so 2018 was a very, very uh, big year for NLP, um, and I'm gonna condense the uh, past six years or so uh, into 25 minutes, so. Let's see. Um, so first, I'll give you a little bit of um, context. Um, Gong um, analyzes uh, business transactions, uh, mostly uh, geared towards uh, sales teams and customer success. We record, transcribe, and analyze uh, sales calls, and then we uh, provide insights. So for example, uh, top sales reps talk more about competition, later in the call after they've uh, discussed value for such and such uh, amount of time. So um, we have a lot of, um, we have a very complex um, um, pipeline, um, very rich data. We have uh, um, the recorded calls, which um, include um, video and audio, which we then um, um, transcribe. Um, with in-house um, uh, speech-to-text um, models. We also have um, um, emails uh, from some of our customers. Um, and then uh, we run um, a number of uh, NLP and NLU um, algorithms, which we then uh, analyze with more um, other uh, models to um, provide insights. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about what we call key spots at Gong. Um, and so an example of uh, some key spots could be action items. So we have a conversation, the sales rep promises to do A, B, and C. We want to highlight those in the call or in the email and then um, create, for example, a to-do list. Um, another uh, example would be objections. Right, the, the uh, potential customer um, is concerned about, uh, I don't know, integration. We want to highlight that. Um, in, and what I'm going to talk about today is, um, is um, finding uh, scheduling events, right? So we have a, a long email correspondence between, uh, between the um, uh, sales rep and, and the potential uh, and the prospect. And many of these emails are, are, they have to do with scheduling, right? And so one use case would be to, to filter these out. Uh, we're, not, we're not entirely interested in, in, um, um, in seeing these emails. Um, or, or we want to see if, um, if there's a prospect that keeps, uh, I don't know, declining a, um, um, a meeting or postponing it, maybe that, correlates with, um, with, with the deal not going so well. I'm going to use um, this as a case study uh, to talk about text classification in general and kind of um, give a short recap of all the advances in NLP in the recent years. So the first approach, what uh, one would do uh, before 2013 would, uh, would be to use a bag of words approach. This means just you have a sentence, you count um, how many times each word appears. So for example, hope your week is going well. We have one in each um, index that um, corresponds to the, to the words in the sentence and zero everywhere else. Um, so each sentence is represented with a very, very long vector, the size of our vocabulary. We then um, use a simple logistic regression uh, classifier, uh, which is basically a weighted sum of the, of the word counts. Um, and we can think of this as a, as a single layer uh, neural network, if, if we want. Um, it's a simple, uh, simple algorithm, but doesn't, uh, but works actually quite well, um, and it's, um, it's simple, it's interpretable, um, it's easy to, to understand um, 
what, um, why uh, a certain sentence was uh, classified as uh, scheduling or not. So we ran the model, 0.88 uh, F1 score, which is a harmonic uh, average of uh, precision and recall. Now, the trouble with bag of words is that the vectors are huge and they're the size of the vocabulary. And any, um, any word that we haven't seen in, uh, in our um, training set is, is just dis disregarded, it's ignored. Um, another, um, uh, another problem is that it doesn't really, it doesn't encode any similarity between the words, right? So um, the distance between cat and kitten is the same as cat and teapot, so it doesn't, doesn't hold any semantic uh, information there. Another thing is we didn't we didn't um, look we didn't take into account the order of the words in the sentence, right? So if we're looking at a, um, uh, for example, a um, sentiment analysis, or we're looking at um, uh, movie reviews, right? So we have the movie uh, was boring and not funny, which is the opposite of. Uh, the movie was funny and not boring, right? So the order matters. So what if we could represent words with a dense fixed size vector where similar words would get similar representations and we'd also encode some of the linguistic features, right? So 2013 um, uh, was, um, was the year where um, uh, word to vec was um, um, was first published, uh, and there are many many ways to learn uh, word embeddings. I'm not going to get into any technicalities. The common concept is uh, you train a, a language model, which means that you predict a word given its context. In some algorithms predict the context from a given word, and in the process of training this uh, um, language model. The intermediate computations will give you the, uh, the word vectors, the word embeddings. So one place where you can find a, a language model is like the autocomplete uh, on your phone. So it, it's predicting, giving you suggestions for the next word. Um, so what does this look like, right? What does the model see? Um, would you be available for a meeting on Tuesday afternoon? Are you free for a call this Monday morning? Uh, in embedding space, you see that um, um, similar words are, are close to each other. Uh, in this case, uh, the word free and available aren't close because free has other meanings, right? Free is also available, but free also in the sense of doesn't cost anything. We used um, uh, word to vec we trained it on our own email corpus. Um, and then we plugged those into a, um, a very simple uh, CNN um, using um, GenSim for the uh, word to vec training and Spacey for the, um, for the um, CNN. Um, so for those of you, I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, NLP or CNNs, but basically the input to this uh, would be a matrix where uh, every sentence is uh, every sentence is um, represented by a, a matrix. Every every word gets a, a row. We then learn the the filters, which uh, they capture the relation between the words. Hopefully, they'll also capture linguistic features. Um, we do some sort of um, uh, pooling, right, to to um, uh, to get a, um, a get a vector, and then usually the last layer is just uh, some nonlinear um, um, activation function, for example, a softmax, which gives us the, um, the prediction. The, yeah. So trading your own word embeddings is very, very easy. Um, as I said, we used, um, um, it's very easy to use uh, Gensim. It runs very, very fast. Uh, it was, and, and this is basically all, all you need to do. Um, it's, you write a sentence generator that will feed the feed GenSim uh, your text sentence by sentence. You run word to vec, you wait a couple of minutes, 
um, maybe 20, depends on, on the size of your corpus, and you get a, you get a model. Um, Spacey can then um, plug that, can, can then take that model and plug it in, uh, incorporate it into the other um, NLP um, uh, pipelines that you, you may need. We ran this, um, slightly better. If these were the word embeddings in 2013, then 2017 brought uh, contextual word embeddings. So what does this mean? Uh, in the previous uh, example, free had, uh, has several meanings, and these meanings kind of average out, and then you, you, you get representations that don't necessarily, um, um, that don't necessarily um, fit your domain, for example. Uh, we wanted free and available to be close to each other, but, but they're not. So 2017 brought uh, contextual word embeddings. And the idea is that the embeddings are dependent on the other words of the sentence. So uh, the word available um, will get a, its vector dependent on, on the sentence that was um, input. So in this case, in this context, free and available are similar and they'll get similar representations. So one example um, of uh, these contextual um, um, word embeddings is Elmo. Um, don't remember the, um, the acronym, but uh, something language model. Um, basically, it's, um, it's a two-layer um, bidirectional um, LSTM. And it learns a forward uh, language model, which means that I'm predicting the last word based on the previous words. And I'm also learning um, the word based on the words that come after it in the sentence. And the final embedding is just a concatenation and a weighted um, average of the um, uh, intermediate representations in each layer. Um, I took this figure from, um, from a medium post called Illustrated Bird. It's a really, really good, uh, good post to understand all, all the different models. We run this. Um, Elmo requires a GPU, um, and um, it's, it's very, very easy to get it uh, up and running. Um, the code is, it's, it's almost like um, uh, Java just written in, in Python, but, but it works. And then another big thing that happened in 2018 was, um, was transfer learning. And transfer learning is responsible for a giant leap forward uh, in computer vision. And in 2018, um, something called that, um, it was applied to NLP, and this some people call as the ImageNet moment of, uh, of NLP. Um, so the idea is that there are um, pre-trained uh, language models that were trained on, on huge um, um, corpora of text, Wikipedia and, and uh, news corpuses, and, and, um, and this encodes two things. It encodes um, world knowledge, Right? For example, um, the, who's the president of the United States or, or um, I don't know, what is photosynthesis? And it also captures, it, it knows English, right? It knows English uh, very well because it was trained on, on a lot of text. Um, so the second step um, would be to fine tune these models to, to uh, make them, to adapt them to your own domain. Uh, if I'm training on, uh, I don't know, fi financial documents, if that's my domain, then I want the word bank to, um, to I, want, um, I want bank to mean a financial institute and not bank as in river bank. Um, so I fine tune that uh, language model to my own domain. Um, and as a final step, I fine tune the classifier. And by this time, my model knows um, not only the language that I want, but it also knows the language I want in, the, um, in my own domain, 
and I, I don't need much data uh, for classification. Um, so uh, for this, uh, we used um, ULM fit uh, by FastAI. And this was trained on about 100 million tokens, uh, Wikipedia 103 um, uh, data set. Um, it runs very, very fast, uh, even without a GPU. And you can, if you only have a small set of labeled uh, documents, you can use it in a supervised um, manner, uh, and it'll give quite good results. Uh, but it improves if you have the, the additional unlabeled uh, data set that you adapt uh, to. So the graph on, on the right here is, is uh, IMDB, and, um, and you see that it gives um, a huge, um, huge improvement in performance, um, especially when, when you don't have a lot of training examples. Again, um, this is what, uh, 10 lines of code, and this is basically all, all you need to run ULM fit, except for the, the uh, import statements that I didn't include here. Um, the top paragraph is um, your language model tuning, and the second paragraph is your classifier. Um, it's widely used um, in the community. I did find it to be a little bit buggy um, a couple of months ago, but because it's such an active community, they, they fix these bugs quite fast. Point nine, we didn't really get into hyperparameter tuning here, um, but you could uh, push this um, forward with uh, dropouts and batch sizes and all kinds of things that I'm not getting into today. And finally, BERT. BERT is um, a model by um, um, Google. Basically, it's a huge model, um, and it it has a lot of, um, it includes a lot of uh, kind of tricks and, and it basically, um, it has, it, it's a combination of, of all kinds of um, um, attention mechanisms and subword representations and it, it's kind of the culmination of, of, uh, of a process that, that as you saw uh, happened um, in 2018. Um, and this one blows, uh, blows the other models out of the water. Um, it's, it's, it's been smashing uh, benchmarks uh, in all kinds of tasks. Um, but um, this one is really, really heavy and possibly too, too heavy for production. Uh, so in our case, it processes about four. Uh, the, lit the literature says maybe 10 sentences per second. Um, it throws out out of vocabulary tokens, so if it doesn't uh, doesn't know a word, it disregards it, and uh, it's limited to a to a fixed size um, um, input. Um, there are two implementations uh, available. The original one um, is in uh, ten TensorFlow, and it was also ported to PyTorch. In conclusion. Um, 2018 was a very good year for NLP. Um, there are lots of um, um, uh, models out there readily available. They work pretty well out of the box without extensive hyperparameter optimization. Uh, the code is well documented. It's a very active community. Uh, you can be up and running within hours or days depending on which model you choose. Uh, unfortunately, uh, these things come at a cost. They most of these need a GPU or, or um, um, and, and we find that ULM fit strikes a good balance between uh, classification performance and the computational requirements. Um, that's it.